In this video, I will show you exactly how you can set up your blog pages in WordPress if your theme didn't come with it out of the box. And I will show you exactly how you can arrange your blog pages to get maximum engagement from your customers and how to organize your blog pages to rank highly on SEO. Let's get right to it. All right, this is my personal website. You can check it out at moluker.com. And as you can see, I currently don't have any blog pages. Uh, if we just go to blog, there's nothing here. It will just give me a 404 page. All right, first we need to decide how we want our blog pages to be structured. And I like this structure, check it out. I want to have a blog landing page and I don't wanna call it a blog, I wanna call it insights. It's a little bit catchier and it doesn't have the stigma of a blog. And then within the blog, I wanna have three different pages. I wanna have a business blog page, an entrepreneurship blog page, and investments blog page. Those are the three pillars that I cover. All right, so how do we do this? We first need to set up those three pages. And we can do that by going to pages and all pages. And then I'm gonna create uh, four new pages. So first I'm gonna create a page. I'm call it, gonna call it insights. So this is my blog page. I'm gonna publish this. Next, I'm gonna go to the next one. I'm gonna add a new page and I'm gonna call it Business Insights or just business. I'm also gonna add the Entrepreneurship Insights. And I'm gonna create the Investments Insights page. Now that I have all my pages, I'm gonna change the URL. I wanna change it to just business. So I'm gonna go in quick edit and I'm gonna just call it business. So now the URL is gonna be my domain forward slash business. I'm gonna do the same for entrepreneurship. And I'm gonna do the same for the investment side. Now, if we look back at the, our structure, we want all of the three pages to be underneath the landing page. So we'll go back and put those as a parent page. So for business, I will go on quick edit. I click on main page and it's gonna be the insights page. For entrepreneurship, it will be on the insights page as well. And for investments, it's gonna be under the ins insights page as well. Now, if you go and look at my posts, these are the blog posts that you will write. Uh, you can see that I already have a few blog posts here already. I already tagged them as a category business. I tagged this one as a category entrepreneurship and I tag this one as the investing uh, tag as well. So now it gets to the juicy part. I am currently using the Elementor editor. So if you go under your plugins, you can check that you have Elementor already installed. If you're in this video, you probably already have this. You can see it's activated. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new plugin. And this is a plugin called PostScript. I'm gonna install now and activate it. Now you can see here that the post grid is already activated. This is the light version, so you don't have to pay for it at all. And you can see that post grid is now added to your toolbar on the left side. But what you can do, the most powerful thing that you can do about post grid is you can now go to your pages. And as you can see here in your pages, you can edit these. So under insights, I'm gonna go and click edit. I'm gonna click edit with Elementor and it's gonna bring me to the Elementor editing page. Within this page, it already loaded this, but that's not usual. So I'm gonna just start from fresh. I'm gonna go into my elements, and here you can see that the post grid elements that it includes are already included on the left side. I want a grid layout, so I'm gonna click here and drag it over. And it loads all of my post grid elements automatically based on my posts that I have submitted in the WordPress page. I wanna split this up though. I want to have different uh, titles and sections. So in this case, I'm gonna go here and I wanna have a different section. So I'm gonna first go to my elements and I wanna split it up by the three themes that I have. The first theme I have is business. The second theme I have is entrepreneurship. And the third theme I have is investments. So now I drag the section title for each one of them. And I'm gonna include another section title here for entrepreneurship, as well as for investments. I will also create a separate section that I call the featured posts. 
So I'm gonna put it up and put it right under Insight. Featured posts. This is how PostGrid is working. As you can see here on the left side, you have different layouts. Layout one, layout two, and layout three. Let's play around with that. Layout one looks like this, layout two looks like this, and layout three looks like this. I like layout three. The look of it looks really clean. There's no background, there's no uh, unnecessary colors, and you can change all of these things under the custom section under style. However, I like this one a lot. So in this case, we can go under settings. We can click under settings and then query build. In this case, each blog post has its own custom ID section and you can eliminate them or include them within the custom section editor. So in this case, my first blog post that I have, I called hello world. Let's say I want to exclude it. In this case, hello world has the ID number one. So I can just click exclude and then say number one. And as you can see, it was excluded from these blog posts. Let's check our section IDs for each of the articles under my WordPress editor. And I can see here under posts, once you click on the blog post, you can now see the post equals to a number. And this number is your ID number. So if we go back to the edit thumbnail here and we wanna exclude the stock appreciation rights blog post, if we want to include it, we put it here. If we want to exclude it, we put it here. So this is the stock appreciation rights blog post. If we want to exclude it, we say exclude blog post number 1101 and it's excluded. So let's put it here and let's say we want to our featured blog post to only be build your own custom GPT. So we go to build your own custom GPT, the one that you want to be featured. And then we see that the blog post is uh, 1071. So we click that with the feature blog post should only be that one blog post. And there we go. We have it all set. Let's say we don't want any of the superfluous information. We don't want the author name, the date, and then the categories that it's part of. We can change that by going under settings and we can go under show, section, title, thumbnail, post excerpt, and metadata. For metadata, we go under show date. I don't want to include that. I don't want to include the categories and I don't want to include the authors. So here we go we have the whole post. Now we want to change, I don't like that the read more button is on the left side. I want that to be in the middle. How do we do that? We go under style and we go under read more. So now I want that to be centered. I click on button alignment, I click on center. There we go, I like that. And I also want the button to be rounded a little bit more. So I'm gonna include a radius. I like 15. That looks much better already. I also don't like that the text is kind of slightly gray. I want that to be a little bit more uh, pungent. I want it to be st sticking out a little bit more, similar to the text up here. I'm gonna click on the excerpt and I'm gonna click on the excerpt color. And I want it to be white, there we go. Not quite as white as a normal text, here we go. If you want it to be red, you can see it's red now, but I actually want it to be a little bit off white, but not as gray as it was before. Right there is perfect, boom, there we go. Now it's uh, the right color that I want. I also don't like that when I hover over it, it goes blue. I want it to be in line with my theme. I'm gonna click on the post title. I'm gonna click on hover and title color on hover. I'm gonna change this to slightly purple the way that it is in my theme. So now when I click over it, it goes right the color that I want. Perfect. I like that a lot. The last thing that we're gonna do for the featured post is that we're gonna eliminate the section title. The way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna click on settings and we're gonna say hide section title. And there we go. We have the featured blog post at the top of the page. For the business section, we also don't want the business title. So we're gonna click on the featured section, click on settings, feature title. We also, similar to last time, we don't wanna show the post date categories and post author. And again, similar to last time, we want it to be in the same layout as before, where it just shows the background, doesn't have any overlay on it. For this section, we only want to feature any of the articles that are tagged as business articles. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to go down here and we're going to click on query build again. This time we're going to click on categories. We only want to include categories that have business in it. And in this case, I only have one article so far, but I'm planning on creating one each week, at least for business one for entrepreneurship and one for investing. And in this case, I'm gonna click on that and it only shows the business articles. We're gonna do the same for the entrepreneurship section. We're gonna click here, layout three. We're gonna go in settings. We're gonna eliminate the title section. We're gonna hide the post date, the categories and the author. And then this time we're gonna select query builds 
and for the entrepreneurship we only want to include entrepreneurship so we click on entrepreneurship and then for the investment section we're gonna do the same thing one more time so now we got the hang of it we click on this we select layout three we select query build we select categories we say investing and then last but not least to make it consistent we're gonna eliminate the section title the post date the categories and the author and uh, the style we want the read more to be in the middle and for this we can actually click go to the first one we can just copy and then we can duplicate paste from a uh, paste style in this case it will paste the read more style here and we'll do that here as well if you forgot how to do it you can click on the section and then go in style go on the read more style and then go on border radius all right so this is how we do the basic section uh heading of this um the next thing that we need to do is we need to go and save this click on update it's updated so now we can go back to our posts we can go back to our pages and now for each one of our pages we have to go into the page and then select the, the blog post that we have there. So for example, for Entrepreneurship Insights, we'll go and edit. We will click El Edit with Elementor. And once again, we do the same thing that we did earlier. We're gonna go on Elements. We're gonna select the heading. The heading is gonna be Entrepreneurship Insights. All right, now what we're gonna do with Entrepreneurship Insights, we're gonna click and drag the uh, grid layout over again one more time. We're gonna do the same thing that we did before, but this time only for Entrepreneurship Insights. So for Query Build, we'll se select the keyword or the category Entrepreneurship. Um, and then we're gonna do the same settings that we did before. We don't want it to show a title. We don't want it to show the post date, category or author. And last but not least, we wanna customize our grid layout to have the read more button be in the middle and also have a border radius of 15. All right, that's looking good. Let's update the page and we will do the same thing again for investment in insights. And we will delete the post date, author, and section title. And one more time, go on query build. This time only include the investments. And we will do it one last time for the last page that we want to have on our blog pages. And for our business insights, click edit with Elementor. Once again, we add a title, we add the grid element, and we select business, we clicked section title off, post it, categories and author, style, read more, we want that to be in the middle. So we click middle, center, and then 15 for the rounded corners. All right, there we go. But we're not quite done yet. If we want all of our pages to connect together, we have to go back and link them together. So we go back, we select update, we go back, we have to connect them together on the insights page or the blog page, however you want to call it. So we go and edit, we click edit with Elementor, we click on the page for each individual category, we click on it, and we're gonna click on links. On this is, we say post link page type, we want it to be linked to detail pages. And then we want it to be link target in the same window. If you're linking to blog posts outside of your page, you probably want to have a new window. But in this case, I want it to link as same window. So in this case, we do that here. We click on links, link to the detail page, same window, boom, get that here. And then same for this links. And by default, it's already on the right categories. One last thing that we can do to link to the right pages, we can click on business, for example. And in this case, we want people to get to the business section if they click on business. We can do that by going to a link. And in this case, we just do forward slash business because that's the page that I created. We select it and we do the same thing for each one of them. For entrepreneurship, we wanna to get to entrepreneurship and for investments, we wanna to get to investments. Click enter and then we're gonna update this page here. So now it's time for us to preview our labor. Let's say we got to insights. We are at insights, we have featured post, we have business, we have entrepreneurship, and then we have investments. Now, if we click on business, we should get to the business section. And there we are, the business page is right there. 
if we want to get to entrepreneurship, we can click on entrepreneurship and we got to, to the entrepreneurship section. If we want to get to investments, we go to the investment section and there we are. Now, the last thing that we need to change in order for this blog to make sense is we go back to our dashboard and we want to include this in our menus. So we click on menus. So I have the inside menu right here. And I also want to go back to my main menu. I have it as a menu currently. I click on there, select it, and I want to add my insights to the main menu. So I'm going to add it to the menu. So I have it right here under insights. I'm going to put it right after startups and investing. It's a normal item and I'm going to save it to menu. So what this will do is it will add it to the nav bar that I have. If you're unfamiliar on how to do this, you can go to here and we can click on customize on your Astra theme. You will see it under menus. So as you can see here now, my I have my main page, venture services, startup resources, and insights. And insights should now give you a sub menu. So let's try that. I click on insights and I should be under my page that I just created with a different blog post that I have. So if I click on this, I will get to the blog post that I had. Here's the blog post. Here's the title. There are some descriptions on the different categories that I have. And then there's my blog post right here. And that is how you include your own custom blog posts with different subsections within your WordPress theme, even though your current theme does not include that or doesn't have it out of the box. You can simply do that with a plugin called PostGrid. And if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, hit subscribe or like. If you didn't like the video, don't. And let me know if you have any questions and check out my other videos on how to make passive income or invest in startups, start your own startup. Peace out.